Well, Radhika, you're now joining us for more on this from Bangalore. Radhika, you, of course, been at the spot tracking just what happened there. We can see those burnt out vehicles there uh, behind you. Uh, you've also been speaking to people who've been trying to piece together just what happened as terror revisits Bangalore. That's right, Natasha. In fact, uh, this particular exercise has been on for at least uh, uh, four hours now. This, of course, is uh, the team of the NIA, which has come down from uh, Hyderabad, as you see. A team of about seven officers have come down from uh, uh, Hyderabad, where uh, a large team or, uh, or a large uh, of the NIA itself is here. Uh, as well as uh, the state city, uh, the state police, where you had, uh, of course, uh, seen pictures of fluorescent uh, uh, jackets, uh, people wearing fluorescent jackets. They've been here trying and assisting uh, the uh, investigating sleuths, clues team officers, forensic team experts to try and collect as much evidence as possible. But uh, now the big task is to lift these vehicles. What you're seeing here the Wagoner, the Maruti Omniwan, and of course the motorcycle which is right in the center which uh, where it is believed that the bomb was kept. Uh, this particular motorcycle, interestingly, Natasha, as I may add to the information we already know, is supposed to have come down from Hyderabad. Uh, the registration or the number plate was that from Tamil Nadu. It was a Tamil Nadu registration, uh, registered number plate, but it seems from sources that it turned out to be fake after all, after the Tamil Nadu police or the RTO has confirmed that uh, that particular number plate wasn't genuine. Uh, it also seems that uh, the owner of the Honda Activa, which again another scooter which was kept right uh, next to the Maruti Omni One, which is charred, which, which is completely ripped apart, the owner had come to claim that particular vehicle. He had left it here last night and he came this morning after news of the blast only to find it in that uh, condition that it was completely ripped off. So nuts, bolts, glass that is strewn all over. Although it is being told that this was a low intensity blast, Natasha, I must show you these pictures. These are, of course, uh, this, is a, this, is, this particular area is completely cleaned up. And, and about an hour ago, the entire area was, uh, it was a carpet of glass, if I may say so, considering glass from vehicles from the parking lot across the street all of it was broken houses across the street uh, the windows completely broken i have with me a few eyewitnesses this young lady who lives right opposite the site of the blast samkriti thank you for talking to us you were home when this happened tell us what you heard what you saw yeah i was at home when this happened i just made myself a cup of coffee and i was just sitting it was a lazy morning the noise was too loud I first figured it must have been a transformer blast, but then glass came flying towards me and that's when I thought it was a bomb. And I was too scared to react, I just ran inside. This glass was from where? From the windows? Uh, from the window next to the door, yeah. Right, so um, this particular, it's, it's a little dark, so it's tough to pan across, but if I may describe to you, the glass panes have been broken because of the sound of the explosion and sound traveled this way because this right behind me is where the blast happened and uh, the glass flew towards the sofa where you were sitting at yes. in the living room. Yes. And then what happened? Did, did, did uh, You of course ran inside <laughs> obviously because you were scared. Yeah. Then uh, many hours later, uh, I spoke with your father some time ago, the motorcycle uh, pieces were, had, also flown, had also come right up to your house. Yes. Uh, we had people from the civil defense come mm -hmm. and check our house. Okay. and they found a piece of the motorcycle under the window pane there mm -hmm. and one on the other side of the house on the roof so uh, and one on the staircase right. many people came to check our house and they found parts of the motorcycle right. and you were asked questions as well uh, not really okay we, okay mm -hmm. so that explains uh, natasha that although it's been termed as a low intensity blast this particular house is at least 150 meters away from the site of the blast itself from the motorcycle to her house and uh, Obviously, the motorcycle parts have flown all that, uh, all that distance, so that explains how far away it has been. Sir, if I may bring in you here, uh, you're a resident of this area for the last how many years and tell us about this years. area. For the last 30 years, we are the residents of Malayshram. Malayshram is one of the most peaceful areas, very, very religious area, very God-fearing, God-loving area. And this particular place, surrounded by four important temples, yes. always the crowd, Bhaktas will be there. We are shocked because we want to know why this has happened sure. and uh, every time these things are happening in our country and we don't know what is the solution and uh, all the investigation agencies they investigate and we don't know what is the action taken so we are really perturbed we are pained we want to put a full stop to this sure. once and for all
Sure. Residents of the area condemning it. They say they're shocked, they're angered, they're disappointed uh, and perturbed and disturbed uh, at an event such as this because it is the first time for Maleshwaram, an area which is otherwise considered to be very calm, uh, peaceful, although crowded. And incidentally, if I may show you this particular board, it says this is the 13th cross. This is a temple road and that's the name of this particular street which has three temples on one side of uh, the site of the blast, which is uh, one Shiv Mandir, two Sai Baba Mandirs, and of course a Vinayaka temple on the other side is another temple, a Sai Baba Mandir, which uh, a lot of people do tell us that it being a working day, had it been a Thursday or a Friday, the crowd would have been much more. But uh, the best part or the, or the fortunate part of it, uh, uh, Natasha, is that uh, the number of uh, those injured, uh, no one is so far in a critical condition as doctors have confirmed to us that all 16 members who have been injured are out of danger. So thankfully, the number, the persons who have been injured are out of danger and are being treated in three different hospitals across Bangalore.